Hello friends, welcome back. This is Omit from Magnet and today we are going to create this nice highway environment scene inside Unreal Engine 5.3. So first take a look what we are going to create today. Before we start, if you are new to this channel, I recommend you to check my videos and if you find those videos useful, please do subscribe this channel and turn the notification on. And here I like to shout out for all those people who has already joined me as a member. So if you really want to support me, you can also join me as a member. So let's get started. So I launch my Unreal Engine from here. Then I choose this games option here and I choose this third person template. And here I also tick on this starter content and then I name my project as tutorial and I hit create and now first we are going to file and create a new level here and I choose this empty level and click on this create. Now we are going to quickly set up our lighting. So for this go to this window then we go to the environment light mixer and I click on this create skylight, create atmospheric light, create sky atmosphere, create volumetric cloud and create height fog. Then we go down here and click on this volumetric fog and then we close this window box. And now we're going to create our landscape. So for this, we go to the selection mode. Then we go to this landscape and we don't need to change anything here. Just click on this create. And then we go back to our selection mode and we're going to put a landscape material over here. So for this, we go to the starter content here. Then we go to this materials and here you can find so many materials. So maybe we're going to use this one here. So we select our landscape. Then we go to its details panel. Then we go down and here you will find this landscape material slot. Just drag and drop this material over here. So here is our landscape material. Okay. And now we're going to put a road on this. So for this, we're going to create a road model and we are going to use Unreal Engine to create a model for the road. So for this, we're going to enable a plugin called this modeling tool. So we go to this edit, then we go to this plugins and we search for model. And you will find this plugin called this modeling tools editor mode. And if you not enable this one, just enable it from here. And maybe you have to restart your engine after you enable this one. So you just close this. After that, we go to the selection mode and select this modeling tool. Then we go to this rectangle option. And here from we are going to increase the subdivisions. So we maybe increase it to maybe 50 by 50. And then we just click over here and click on this accept. So here is our rectangle model. Then we go back to our selection mode and we put this rectangle model little bit higher here, just like that. And then we're going to export this model as a ABX file. So we're going to select this model here. Then we go to its details panel in order to find this model into our content drawer. So you just click on this search option here and here it is. Then we right click over this rectangle model. Then we go to this asset actions and we click on this export. And then you specify the pathway where you want to save these assets. And also we name this as road and then just click on this save. And here is some options. Don't need to change. Just click on this export. And then we're going to delete this one. 
and now we're going to import this model again so here is this model that we just exported and now we're going to re-import this model into our content drawer so first we go to this content then we go to right click here and create a new folder and we name this as 3d model then we open this folder and here we're going to import the asset so here it is just drag and drop over here and then we're going to click on this build in nanite option if you want to make this model as a nanite model just click over here and also click over here which is called this force front x axis just click over here then we just click on this import all then also we close this and now we need a road texture on this so for this i'm going to use the quick cell content so just right click and click on this add quick cell content so this is the quick cell bridge and i have already downloaded a material so i just go to this local and i'm going to use this one and i am using the medium quality here but if you want a nice result you have to download this high quality here and after download click on this add button then minimize this one and here is our material so we're going to use this material for the road so we go to this 3d model folder and then there is the road model we're going to open this material just double click here and now we're going to apply the material over here so for this again we go to this mega scan folder then we go to the surfaces and then go to this folder and we use this material over here so just select this material from here and click on this arrow switch here okay and now if you see you can see that here is our road and now we're going to use the spline system to make our road so for this we go to this landscape mode again then we go to this manage tab and we click on the splines and then we come over here on this layer then right click and click on this create and also we right click here then we rename this as road and then again also right click and click on this reserve for splines and also we click on this yes okay and now we're going to put the spline point over this landscape to make our road so maybe we start from over here and in order to put the spline point first we're going to press and hold the control key on the keyboard and then just click over here so you can see that this is our spline point and maybe we come over here and again press and hold the control key and then just click to make another spline point and so on okay just like this and now we are going to assign our road model to this spline to make this road okay and maybe we can also extend our spline point towards here if you want so how we can do that just select this spline point over here and then again press and hold the control key and just click to extend these spline points okay just like that and now we are going to apply the 3d model over this spline so for this first we go to this 3d model here is this 3d model here and then we select any of this spline point here and then we go to this details option here and just click on these segments okay just like that and then we come down over here and you will find this option called this spline mesh so you just click on this plus switch to put a spline index here then we expand this option and now we're going to drag this model over this slot and you can see that this put this road model over here okay but you can see that this looks something uh, bad here but don't worry we're going to fix it so first we're going to put a mannequin to identify the actual size of the road so for this we go to this characters folder here then we go to this mannequins then go to this mesh and here you will find these meshes so just drag and drop over here and you can see that the road size is very big here as compared to this mannequin so we're going to decrease the road size first so for this again we select this spline and in this time we not going to go to these segments we go to this control points just click over here and you will find these new options here so we only go to this half width option and the default value is 1000 we're going to decrease it to maybe 500 okay so as you can see that the 500 look nice 
and also you can see that uh, our road is glitchy here so again we select these segments here and then we come down and you will find the center adjust first you go to the second option here and put a value to maybe 0.2 here and now you can see that this look nice okay and now as you can see that our road texture is little bit too shiny here so we're going to adjust the material also so for this again we go to this material so we go to this mega scan folder then go to this surfaces and open this material and then we go down to the specular here to activate this specular here and then we're going to decrease the value to maybe 0.1 and now you can see that this look nice and then we minimize this one okay and now maybe we're going to save our project so we go to this file and go to this save all and maybe we also name our label as tutorial and we save this one okay so now we're going to download some assets uh, for our environment and for the tree i'm using the black elder from the epic game marketplace so for the tree i'm using this mega scan tree black elder and once you download you will find this black elder folder and if you enable the static mesh filter you will find all these trees here and if you not have the static mesh filter just go to this three line option here and just select this static mesh filter over here and also we need some of the ground assets so for this i'm going to use some mega scan assets so we just go to this content folder and then right click and go to this add quick cell content and i have already downloaded some of the file so i go to this local folder and here is all the assets so i'm going to add those assets into my project and after select i go over here and you have to download this first i have already downloaded so i just go to add button here and you can also change the quality from here but sake of this tutorial i'm using the medium quality for now but for the best quality you have to download the nanite version just click on this add button to add those assets so once you add the assets you will find those assets inside this mega scan folder and under this 3d assets folder so here is all the assets and you can also visualize all these assets together by just clicking over here that is the static mesh and first we're going to do one thing that we can change all those assets into a nanite mesh so we just select all of these assets from here and then just right click go to the nanite and click on this enable nanite okay and then we're going to put those assets over here so we just move our camera here maybe we start from here so maybe first we're going to use this one so we just select this one and just bring it over here maybe we're going to increase its scale so we just increase its scale a little bit here and then we're going to rotate this okay just like that and maybe we're going to place it over here okay maybe we're going to disable the snapping of this rotation so we can rotate easily and you can see that those assets look really amazing okay and this is a medium quality asset but if you use the nanite version you will get the highest qualities possible here but for the sake of this tutorial because i am also screen recording this so i'm using this medium quality for this demonstration and also maybe we can disable all this snapping here so can move nicely and then we're going to use different assets here to fill this area okay so as you can see we completed this side and now we do the same thing to the this side also
okay as you can see that i mostly duplicate this side so i'm going to use different assets to make some randomization over here so maybe i can use these assets randomly Okay, so I roughly done these things, um, but you can use different assets to make some nice randomization over here. And now we're going to put the trees over here. So I'm go to this black elder folder again, and then select the static mesh filter. And let's choose some trees from here. Okay, so maybe first we're going to put uh, this large tree to this side. So maybe we're going to use this one. And as you can see that those trees are really high quality. So if we put so many trees over here, maybe our scene will be very laggy. So I'm going to try to use minimum trees as possible. And then also we can duplicate this tree over here. Okay. And also do the same thing to this side also. Okay, so our scene looks something like this and now maybe we're going to create a camera for our scene and do some light settings. So for the camera, first you go to this option and then go to the cinematic and create a cine camera actor. Okay, just like that. And then we're just going to right click over here and then we just click on this snap object to view. Okay, and then we also go to this perspective option and select our cine camera actor. Okay, just like that. And then also we're going to create a sequence for our scene. So we go to the sequence tab here and click on this add level sequence. And maybe we can also change our sequence name. So maybe we name this as tutorial sequence and then we just click on this save. So this is our sequence. And then now we're going to bring our camera over here. So we go to this outliner folder and search for camera. Here it is. And then we just drag it over here. Okay, just like that. Very simple. And then we also select our camera. Then we go to its details panel and we're going to change some settings. So first you go to this film back. We change this film back settings to 16 is to 9 DSLR. Then also we go down and under this lens option, we expand that. Then we go to this exposure settings and we change this metering mode to manual. Okay, just like that. And then also we go to this exposure compensation option. We bring it to maybe 10. Okay, just like that. And then also we come over here to this sequence and we go to this current focal length. Maybe we're going to decrease this value to maybe 15 to make a nice wide angle camera here. And at the same time, we go to this outliner folder and we search for exponential height fog or here it is. We going to the top and we decrease our fog density to make it little bit of visible. Okay, so this is we got so far and now we're going to put other trees here. So for this, we again go to this black elder folder, then also select the static mesh filter. And now we're going to put some of this, this type of trees. So maybe we start from here and we put this tree over here like this. Okay, just like that. And also we do the same thing to the rest of this place. So we just duplicate this tree over here and also use different trees. So maybe use this one. And then also we have different trees. So maybe use this one here. Okay, so as you can see that this looks something like this and we can also fill this whole area by using this.
okay we put all the tree on the left side and maybe we can also change our light position to see this area properly so i press and hold the control and l key and then i move my mouse over here and now you can see all these trees and maybe we can also go to this camera here uh, on this sequencer and then we can decrease this camera aperture to make some bright area and now we're going to do the same thing to this right side also So as you can see that when we put those trees into this side, this getting better now. And also maybe if we change our light position to the very top here, like this, you can also get a nice scene here. Okay. And now we're going to put a rail on this side as well as this side. And for the road rail, I'm using a spline tool. So for the spline tool, I'm using a free spline tool. So I also show you that how you can get the spline tool. So for the spline tool, I am using this free blueprint and many thanks to the creator who actually built these assets and also gave it for free. But you can also give some donation here and just put your price here and then just uh, click on this purchase here and you will get this asset. And also the creator made a nice demonstration video on YouTube. So I am also gave the YouTube video link in my video description. So you can also know about this tool. And once you download the asset, you will find this file. So first you're going to extract this and after extract, just double click to open this and this is the folder. So first you're going to copy this. So I just copy this and we're going to paste it into our project directory. So in order to get the project directory, we open this one and also we open our Epic Game Launcher here and then we're going to find our project file. So here it is, which is called this tutorial. Then we just right click here and click on the show in folder and here is our project file directory. So we go to this content folder, double click to open and here we're going to paste this folder. So here it is. So we just close this one here and also close this. So once you copy the folder, you can see this folder here, but you can see that this folder is incomplete. So we have to restart our engine one more time. And also we save our progresses here. Okay, after restart, if we go to this folder, you will find all these folders here. So maybe first you go to this spline tools here. And here you can see three types of different blueprint for the spline. But before we use that, we need a road rail model. So I'm going to download a road rail model from the mega scan. So this is the guard rail that I'm going to use here. So once you download, go to this mega scans folder and then go to this 3D assets folder and also check the static mesh and here is those barricades. So first we're going to convert those barricades into a nanite mesh. So I select all of this and then right click and just click on this enable nanite. And now we're going to use this spline tool to create this road rail over here. So we go to this BP spline folder again and then go to this spline tools. And here is the second one. So I'm going to use the second one. So we just bring it over here first. Okay, just like that. And if we go closer here, you can see this is the spline tool. And if you press G, so you can visualize this. And now we're going to assign our asset. So again, we go to this mega scan folder, then go to this 3D assets. And we're going to use this one. And then we're going to select our blueprint here. And then we go to its details panel after selecting this spline tool. And here you will find this static mesh slot. So we just bring these assets to this static mesh slot here. Okay. And here you can see this looks something like this. Okay. And now first we going to 
rotate this into this side so maybe we just select our spline tool and then press e to get this rotation gizmo and we rotate into this side okay just like that and we can also adjust it later on and then we're going to select this point here and now we're going to expand this so we just expand it like this and when you drag this point you can see that the new static mesh generated okay so maybe we can generate this much and then we going to position it here okay just like that and maybe we can also extend it a little bit more to this round edge here and then we going to place it over here and also we dip it down to the ground like this okay so maybe we go a little closer here just like this and now you can see that it also intersect our road so maybe we're going to bend this so maybe we can bend it from here so just go over here and then we right click over this spline line maybe first we're going to select this and then we just right click here and you will find this option called this add spline point here and then we just bend it here okay just like that very simple so many thanks to this creator that we actually build this spline beam blueprint so we can do these things very easily okay just like that very easy and maybe again we create a spline point over here also and we dip it down like this and also do the same here okay and one thing you can also notice that there is little bit of gap here so we going to adjust this gap so we come to uh, its details panel after selecting this spline tool we go to its details panel and here you will find this spline mesh offset so we going to decrease this value until this match our scene here just like this okay so now if you see you can see that this look really amazing and also you can see that this is a little higher here so we're going to also adjust this position so we press g again and then we right click over this spline line and then we just dip it down here okay very easy and simple also do the same here okay just like that very easy and also as you can see that at this end point you will see that there is no small pillar here so don't worry we have this asset so we just going to put this assets over here and maybe we going to rotate this and then we place it over here just adjust it okay very easy okay and now we're going to do the same thing to this side also so maybe we can select this one and then we're going to duplicate this so we just duplicate it over here okay just like that and maybe we're going to adjust it a little bit so we selected this last point here and we're going to adjust it and then maybe we are going to create a spline point over here and we are going to adjust it like this okay so very simple and easy maybe we are going to delete this spline point okay and maybe you can also put the same spline over here also so it all depends on you and i'm just show you that how you can apply this spline here and once you apply this splines you can see that this look really amazing okay so now we're going to put uh, some assets to fill this area also so as you can see that this area looks empty so for this maybe we're going to use this 
so for this maybe we're going to use this same uh, static meshes and maybe we can increase its scale to fill this area okay and now we can also put some additional trees here to make things look nicer so we again go to this uh, black elder folder here then we're going to put some of these different looking trees small trees here so maybe we're going to use this one here and in this side uh, there is some uh, extra leaves here so maybe we can Place it here or maybe you can delete this one and also maybe we can place those trees little bit inside there or we can maybe delete some of these extra trees here okay so this is our basic road scene and now we're going to design with some other external props so in my actual video i put a watchtower here and some of these wooden debris here and there i download the watchtower model from the sketchfab so let's download the model first so this is the watchtower that i'm going to use here and many thanks to the creator and in order to download just go over here and if you use this model, you have to credit the creator by just copying this into your video description. And the FBX version is also available here. So I'm going to use this FBX version here. And also I'm going to use this one. And also many thanks to the creator here. So just go over here to download. And I'm also going to use this road sign signboard. And many thanks to the creator also. Just click over here to download. So once we download the assets, we have to extract those and then we're going to bring this into our Unreal Engine project. So we go to the source and again we have to extract this. So here it is. So in order to import those, we go to this 3D model folder here. But again, in order to organize the assets, maybe we can create a new folder here. So we create a new folder and maybe you can see that the folder is gone. So we just uncheck the static mesh filter here and here is the folder. Just double click to open and then we select all of these three and just drag it over here and then also we make it as a nanite model so just click over here and then just click here to import all so here is this model and you can see that if we import the abx file it automatically create its own material so we don't need to worry about the material so we just bring it over here and as you can see this is very tiny so we're going to increase its scale so maybe we come over here into a details panel and then we lock the scale here and then we're going to increase this value to maybe 10 for now and 10 is also very small so maybe we can make it 1000 here and as you can see that the 1000 is very big here so maybe we can decrease this value to maybe 100 here and the 100 look nice okay and now we're going to rotate this So maybe rotate it to 180 degree here and then we going to place it here and there. So let's see if we place it over here. So maybe we can place this over here. So maybe we can delete some of this tree from here and then we going to place it here. Okay. And then maybe we rotate this to this side and then we place it over here. Okay. And maybe we can shift some trees from here. Okay, just like that. Okay, so as you can see that this is some of this empty space and we fill it with this debris. Okay, and then maybe we can just place it here. And also we duplicate it one more time maybe we can increase its scale a little bit more and then we're going to place it here okay just like that 
and maybe we can put it little higher here okay and then also we dip this asset little down and also do the same thing this side also So this all depends on you that how you want to design this scene. Okay, so you can also put other debris uh, into here and there because you can also get some of the nice debris uh, from this sketch fab. But I'm just showing you that uh, how you can do these things. So maybe we can just put this little bit down here. Okay, and now we're going to put the watchtower over here. And here it is. So we go to the source folder and here it is so again we create in another folder and maybe inside this folder we bring this watchtower here and maybe we can disable this option call this force front x axis and just click on this import all and we close this window and you can see that uh, this is uh, divided with different assets so but don't worry we are going to fix this with a single asset but first we are going to uh, put the material here so for this we again uh, bring the textures here so here is the texture folder so we are going to import the texture also so we select all of these textures and just bring it over here and then we are going to create the material so we are going to open this material here so here is the material maybe we can make little room here and then first we're going to delete this default texture here and first we bring this albedo texture or the diffuse color so we just connect it with this base color here and then we bring this metallic so we just bring it over here and we don't need this AO but yes you can also put this AO to this ambient occlusion slot and also we put the normal map to the normal here and the roughness to the roughness okay just like that very simple and just click on this apply and also save this one then we minimize this one so as you can see that all assets are textured here so we don't have to worry about texturing it individually so first we're going to select this first one and then we go down at the bottom to this last one and we press and hold the shift key and just click to select all of these assets together and then we going to bring it over here okay so as you can see that this look really amazing but because it's a bunch of different assets so maybe we can make a folder here to organize the asset so here is all these assets so first we're going to select all of these assets here here is the last one so i press and hold the shift key and just select all of this and then we click on this folder button here to put it inside a folder here so maybe we can also name this as a radio tower and also we right click over this radio tower folder then go to the select and click on this all descendants then we right click and create a group here okay so now if we just move this group we can move all of these assets together okay very easy so now we're going to put this radio tower over here maybe so again in order to put this radio tower we have to delete some of this tree just like that maybe we can also delete this one and also this one maybe okay and now we going to place this over here okay and then also maybe we can put those assets over here and as you can see that we cannot see this radio tower properly so maybe we can also delete some of the trees or we can just bring it a little bit closer to this road and then maybe we can delete some of this tree from here and then also we can bring those pile of junks little bit closer to this road and then also we going to duplicate it one more time and also we 
place it here. Okay, so is this all depends on you that how you want to design. So as you can see that if we put some extra trees, it will look better. Okay, just like that. So now as you can see that we have this nice radio tower here and this look really amazing or maybe we can put this radio tower a little bit closer to this road here and maybe we can also put some of the small trees here and there so for this maybe again we go to this black elder folder and then we select some of the small trees here like this And then finally, we have a road sign. So we also going to put the road sign here and here it is. And you can see that this is the OBJ file. So don't worry, we can also import OBJ files. So again, create a new folder here. Then, and yes, you can also name the folders as you want. And then we going to drag this model here. And because it's a OBJ file, so the dialog box look different, but don't worry, just click on this import. And then also we going to bring the textures also. So just select all of this and bring it over here. And then we going to create a material for this. So we just right click, click on this material. Then we open this material here. And now we're going to use those assets. So maybe we're going to use this albedo map here. Just connect it to this base color. Then also we have this AO connect with this ambient occlusion. Then also we have metalness here. Connect with this metalness here. This normal map connect with this normal here. And finally we have this roughness map. So connect with this roughness here. We're going to just apply this and save this. We close this one. And now here is our model. So we just bring it over here. And also we're going to rotate this to 90 degree. So we snap this rotation and then we rotate this to 90 degree here and also we rotate it into this side to 90 degree and then we place it over here and also we apply the material that we just created. So just select this material and drag it here. Okay, just like that. And as you can see that we rotate it wrongly. So again, we rotate it into this side to 180 degree here and then we are going to place it here so maybe we can place this and then we are going to place this signboard here or uh, maybe we can increase its scale little bit so now you can see that this look amazing so now we are going to put some other assets so I'm going to download some assets from the mega scan. And as you can see, I have downloaded some of the assets. So let's choose all of these assets together and import it into our project. So maybe first we're going to use some of these dead tree stump. So maybe use this one and then maybe use this one. Okay, so as you can see that I have added several assets here and some of the plants also and just click on this download and once you add the assets you will find those assets inside this mega scan folder then 3d assets and also check on this static mesh filter and then first we're going to convert them all nanite so we select all of this then right click go to the nanite and just click on this enable nanite for 25 meshes and then maybe first we're going to use this one so we just bring it over here and as you can see that these assets look really amazing. Okay, and maybe we can bring this some tree also here. 
And now if we reposition our sun maybe here, maybe like this, and you will get a nice result here. Or maybe we can put some of this, some extra trees over here. And then we increase its scale maybe. And let's see. Maybe we can place this tree over here. And again, increase its scale. Okay. So now you can understand that how you can put those trees here and there to block the area. And you can also see that some of these areas are empty there. So maybe again, we can put some of these extra trees there also to hide these gaps. So you can place the trees like a way that it looks a very dense forest like seen. Okay, just like that. But we can use little bit of trees to make this kind of dense forest. Okay, and now you can see that this area looks very dense. And likewise, you can see that the far this part is not look that dense. So again, we can duplicate this tree or maybe we can increase its scale like this. And then we just use few of this tree to make this area a little bit of dense. Okay, just like that. Maybe we put it a little bit down. Okay, just like that. Okay, and now if we go over here, and now you can see that this area look really dense. Okay, so now we have to put other assets. So maybe first we're going to put some of this reflector over here. So as you can see that we have some of these reflectors here. So maybe we can put some reflectors here and there. So maybe we put this one over here. And then also we have some of these stop sign. So maybe we can put some stop sign here also. And now finally we're going to put some plants. So again, we down, downloaded some plans from the mega scan. So again, we go to this 3D plans and maybe we can click on this static mesh filter here. And again, we can convert all of these trees or plants into a nanite mesh. So we select all of this and just click on this enable nanite for every assets here. Okay. And for the plants, maybe we can use the foliage section. So we go to the selection mode and go to the foliage and here those plants are already added here. So maybe first we're going to use these elder berries. So maybe select all of this. And here first we're going to decrease the density to maybe 50 here. And maybe also we check this align to normal switch here. And now also we can do one thing that we can decrease the brush size to maybe 50 here. And also increase the density, paint density to one. And now we're going to start painting here, maybe. So as you can put the small plants here, it also look amazing. And as you can see that those plants are all static. So in order to put the wind effect here, maybe we deselect this static mesh filter. Then we go to this folder and also open the material here. 
so we just open this material and then in the search bar we search for wind and here is the wind and now we just have to enable the wind from here okay and just save this and then we minimize this one and you will get nice wind effect here okay and also we have other plants so maybe use this one so again we enable the wind for this also so we open this material then go to the search bar and type for wind and enable the wind here and just save this and then again we are going to use those plants also so the plant is here so select all of this and make sure that you deselect the previous plants and now we going to apply those also so maybe again we just select all of this and again we decrease the density to maybe 50 here and everything look nice and now we can put okay and let's see what else we have here so there is some of these other plants so again we going to select all of these plants here maybe some of them then select and we again we decrease the density to maybe 20 here and then we're going to paint okay just like that or maybe this plant is not look that good here so again we deselect all of this and only select those and in order to delete just press and hold the shift key and just paint so you can easily delete the unwanted plant if you accidentally put some unwanted plants here and there you can easily delete those okay so this is the trick so this is how you can easily design this area okay and then finally we are going to put some other assets so i am going to download some assets from the epic game marketplace for the ground assets so let's see so for some visual effects i am going to use this ruler australia pack and for some ground assets i am using this forest path and after you download first you go to this forest tute folder which contain the forest path assets and enable the static mesh and you can also get some of these nice assets from here so maybe we can put uh, some of this dead stump over here maybe you can increase its scale so those assets are very useful and you can see that this look really amazing and some of these dead stumps over here also okay and also we have some of these small rocks as well as those falling sticks here so we're going to use the foliage tool to scatter all of these assets so maybe first we're going to use some of these falling leaves so again first we're going to deselect all of these pre-selected assets and then we're going to bring those assets over here so maybe we can select this one first which is the falling leaves and we're going to use these falling leaves over here and maybe we're going to use different one also so we put all of these two together and then maybe we can increase the density to maybe 400 here and now we're going to paint okay and maybe also we can select those sticks here so maybe we can put some sticks also so again put all of the sticks there and then maybe we can deselect those falling leaves and only select those sticks and again we deselect this align to normal option here and then we're going to put the sticks here and there okay so now you can see that with these small details this look really amazing okay and also you can put some extra details by using some of the decals so let me show you that how you can use the decals so again maybe we can download some decals from the mega scan so again right click and go to this add quick cell content and here we have some of these nice decals here so maybe use this one and this one this one maybe and also some of these asphalt decals here 
and then just click on this download or maybe some of these dart decals here and also some of these road textures and then add okay so once you add the decals you will find under this decals folder which is present inside this mega scan folder so if you go to this mega scan folder you will find this decals folder and inside this decals folder you will get all these decals and the decals are basically the material instance so if you click on this material instance filter you will get all these decals into a same place okay so now maybe we can put some decals here so as you can see that uh, there is a very sharp transition between those assets and the ground so if you put some decals here so maybe if we put these decals here and then if we just bring this decal a little bit down here you can get some of these nice transitions here okay and it will look nice that it gives the feels that these assets are present here for a long period of time and so but you have to place the decals very carefully okay just like that and maybe use this one also so you just bring it a little bit down here and place it over here okay just like that and also we have some of these road cracks decals so maybe you can also use them but as you can see that this is very big so we're going to decrease its scale like this and then you can place the decals here and there okay and also do the same things here also and maybe some of these dart decals here Okay, just like that. Okay, and now finally, we're going to use the Ruler Australia pack to get uh, more assets here. So maybe here it is, then again, and this pack contains so many nice assets so maybe first we're going to use some of these dead tree assets here so now you can get some of these nice assets over here and there and also this pack contains some of these visual effects like the falling leaves so again if we go to this ruler australia folder then go to this fx and here is the fx called this falling leaves so you just open this one and then maybe we can put some of these fx over here so maybe put some fx here and then you can see that some of these falling leaves are falling to the ground and likewise you can also put multiple ones over here and then also over here maybe here also okay so it will give a nice result here okay and then finally we go to the starter content folder then we go to this particles folder and here you can also get some of this nice ambient particle dust effect here so maybe you can put it over here if you press g so you can visualize those and maybe you cannot see it properly but when you render it with the movie render queue you can easily visible those particles here okay so maybe you can also put some of them over here and here you can also get some of these nice smoke particles so you can also put some of the smoke particles here and there if you want and now we are going to make a nice camera animation here so you can also make a running camera animation so maybe we can start from here and then we going to make a keyframe over here to this transform but before we do that we go to this keyframe settings switch and then we change this to linear here and then we make a keyframe here and also we check on this auto key switch here then we go to this last frame 
and maybe we can just move our camera over here okay and then if you play you can see a very nice camera animation here or maybe my camera animation is a little bit laggy because i am using the epic settings and at the same time i am screen recording this so i just change this to high here for now and now you can get a nice smooth camera animation here okay and maybe we can also put some camera shake here so for the camera shake maybe we going to create a blueprint for this so we go to this content and then right click here and go to this blueprint class then go to this all classes and we search for shake and here you will find this camera shake base just select this one then we're going to open this blueprint and first we're going to change this root shake pattern to parallel noise camera shake pattern here then we expand this and first we go to the timing and we change this to zero okay and then maybe we come over here and compile these settings then we go to our sequence maybe we just place it over here then we go to this camera and then go to this plus switch and we go to this camera shake and we select our new blueprint here and also we expand it to here and also we can make some extra camera cut frame to here for this warm-up cut frame and we go to the very beginning and then we're going to put some rotation values here but before you do that maybe we can play our video and also check this loop switch here okay and now maybe we can put some values over here so if we put one or maybe we can put some high frequency shake to five here but this is too much of shake so we're going to decrease this amplitude to maybe 0.2 here and now you can get a very subtle but high frequency shake here okay so maybe you cannot understand uh, in this viewport but when you render it you would get a nice result here okay so this is how you can make a nice camera animations also and you can also get some camera animation tips if you see my actual video of this so you will get nice idea for some nice camera animations also okay and now before we do that let me show you some of these camera tips so we go to this camera and then if you want to make a anamorphic camera so what is anamorphic camera if you just look it here and then if we increase this camera focal length here and maybe we can change this to cinematic for now and now you can see that the blur area is looks roundy here but if you want to make it anamorphic and like that if you want to make this blur area to be little bit oval size you can also do that that if you select the camera then we go to this lens settings here and here you will find this squeeze factor so you can increase it all the way to here like this and then again we come back over here that is the film back we expand this and here you will find this sensor width okay so as you can see that our width is very high here but uh, we have to decrease it by its half so we go to the sensor width and then we just come over here and we type the divider sign here and just divide it by two okay and now you can see that if you look closely that if we just zoom in very here and now you can get nice oval shaped blur here so this will be look very nice so if you want an anamorphic camera you can do this process here okay just like that and now maybe again we set it to 15 mm lens okay just like that and again we come back to high settings here okay and maybe also delete this keyframe here okay and then also we select our camera then we go down here 
inside this lens option here and first we go to this chromatic abrasion settings we can increase the intensity to maybe 0.5 here so we will get nice chromatic abrasion here but if you don't want it entire the scene you can only enable this to the edge only so you can increase this value so you can see the chromatic abrasion only the edge not this entire area okay and also you can do one thing that you can also go to this lens flare option and you can also enable this lens flare or maybe you can just put it little bit so maybe 0.5 here and now if you see if you see the sun you can get this nice lens flare so maybe if you find our sun here maybe okay so as you can see that if you see the sun you can get this kind of nice lens flare here okay just like that and again we select our camera then we go down here into this image effect here you can also put some vignette effect to the edge so maybe if you put you can get some of this nice vignette effect here and also you can sharpen your scene by just enable this sharpen effect here so you can see that you can sharp this area so if you see this area you can see that you can sharp this but not sharp uh, too much just a little bit okay so this is some of the tips and tricks uh, for this camera settings so and also maybe we can put our sun here maybe and also we delete this keyframe so this is it and now i'm going to show you that how i rendered this scene so to in order to render it in high quality we need to enable a plugin called the movie render queue so we go to this edit then we go to this plugins and here from you can enable the movie render queue plugin so just type movie and here you will find this movie render queue and this movie render queue additional render passes just click on this restart now and also save the progresses here and after restart close this window and also this window and then open our level which is called this tutorial and also open the sequence here and then go to this perspective and select our cine camera actor okay so this is our sequence and now we go to the window go to the cinematics and select this movie render queue and then also go to this render and select your actual sequence so in this case this is the tutorial sequence then we go to the settings and unsafe config and first we're going to delete this jpeg sequence because we don't want to render our scene into a jpeg sequence then we go to the settings go to the anti-aliasing and we change the temporal sample count to maybe 32 here and also enable this override anti-aliasing and also enable those the warm-up frames because we also put some warm-up frames over here then again go to the settings go to the camera and we change the shutter timing to frame close here again go to the settings then go to this game overrides and we don't need to change anything here again go to the settings then go to the high resolution and we enable the subsurface scattering override here again go to the settings and we select this EXR sequence so our render will be in EXR sequence then finally we go to this output and here from you can also change the directory where you want to render your scene and also you can change the custom frame rate if you want but the default is here you can see that the default is 30 fps and then just click on this accept and now just click on this render local and your file will be ready and if you want to know that how you can compile those exr sequence into a nice video file you can please check my previous tutorial on that and there i'm also show you that how you can uh, correct the colors of your scene and also how you can render it into a nice video file inside after effect so i hope that you will get the idea okay and finally a bonus tips that how you can put some electric lines here so as you can see that we have downloaded this bp spline tool and this also brings a nice system for the spline that you can easily put some electric lines here so for the electric lines we go to the spline tools and in this case we're going to use this third one here so maybe first we're going to start from here so we're going to put a electric post over here 
and you can see that there is no wires but we're going to duplicate this electric post so maybe we can duplicate this over here so in our duplicate just press and hold the alt key and just duplicate these pillars here and now in order to connect the wires first we're going to select the second one uh, let's say that you can uh, connect the wire from these poles to these poles so first we're going to select this pole and then we come to this blueprint here and we click on this uh, picker switch here then we just pick this pole over here and now you can see that it connect the wires here okay likewise if you just select this pole and then you just pick this pole from here just go to this blueprint and pick this pole here and you can connect the wires so likewise you can have to do all of this here so maybe select this one okay so this is how you can also places those electric lines and maybe sometime you can see that these electric lines go through this one so maybe we can select this one and just place it here okay so this is how you can place those electric lines so this is a bonus tips and again if you want to know more about these blueprints you can also check the actual video of this creator so this is it and this is how i make this scene and i go through all the processes that i use to make my actual video so i hope that you really enjoy this video and you can easily make this similar kind of video by using this tutorial and if you like this kind of video i recommend you to check my other videos and if you like those videos please do subscribe this channel and turn the notification on so i am amit and we will see in my next video so till then take care and bye bye